Hey, welcome to a special edition of Raging Chicken Radio's Out to Coop podcast. This is the editor and founder of Raging Chicken Press, Kevin Mahoney, and uh, I'm here with Sean Kitchen today. Hey, Sean, how you doing? Pretty good. How are you? All right. So uh, Sean had the suggestion, and I thought it was a fantastic idea, is that you know the PA primary was yesterday. This is Wednesday, April 27th, and the PA primary was yesterday. And uh, we thought we'd do a little post-mortem of the primary. Um, there were certain aspects of the primary that kind of turned out just as, just as we expected. Um, however, there were some surprises, and uh, there's been some uh, you know, kind of blowback in the aftermath of it. So we just thought we'd just just kind of run through a little bit about that, throw this up as an ep- extra episode. I, and I want to let everybody know, too, as well, is that um, we are now on Podbean, too, as well. I think Podbean is going to be our go-to site for the podcast. And um, so please, you get a chance, go check us out over there at Out to Coop Podcast. Check us out on Podbean. Um, go to RagingChickenPress.org or go to our Facebook page. Um, and you can get the link um, directly for the pod being there. Uh, but I, I think we'll be able to do some cool stuff with it, especially because there's a, a fabulous mobile app, that um, a Podbean mobile app that um, makes it really easy for people to subscribe um, and to embed the content and so on. But, you know, we'll get into that at another point. So, Sean, just uh, just to start out, just just kind of give me your takeaways from last night. I mean, it was, it was quite a night for sure. It was. Um, well, I was asleep most of the night. I fell asleep a little bit early today just from uh, yesterday from work. But looking deeper into the results this morning, it, I'm getting the sense that um, you know the rural parts of our state are tired of being left behind. I think that's um, right. You know, we have you, Sanders took a lot of people, a lot of, a lot of the counties in the middle of Pennsylvania, where there is not a Democratic stronghold, and then um, John Fetterman ran a campaign blasting or trying to pr- pr- promote uh, what's happening in Bradford, Pennsylvania, where he's from, and also the plagues that rural Pennsylvania and a lot of our smaller cities outside of uh, Pittsburgh and Philadelphia experience. And Absolutely. I think those, those are two of the biggest things, and that's really like why why we do the Raging Chicken. No, you know, I, why we're based out of Lehigh Valley and stuff like that. Absolutely. And I have to say this. is like I, I, I have been talking about this for, for I, as long as I've, I've lived in Pennsylvania, to be perfectly honest with you. But, um, you know, I've always, you know, I know we've joked about it even on the podcast before about, you know, Pennsylvania or Pennsylvania or whatever, uh, you know, whatever we're talking about it. But, you know, everyone wants to talk about the T, you know, that is Pennsylvania, that you've got, you know, the major urban centers in, uh, in Philadelphia and Pittsburgh, and then everything else is kind of like Alabama or Kentucky in between. But the fact is, is that there's a really different tradition in Pennsylvania, right? You know, this is a coal mining state. This is a steel production state um, that you had some of the strongest union density of any state in the union um, um, here, right? And a lot of that kind of union ethic, that working class ethic um, was not confined to the cities, you know? And I think we do ourselves a real disservice um, when we just reinforce that kind of narrative, because it's the same, it's the same narrative, it's the same story that leads the Pennsylvania Democratic Party to virtually ignore the bulk of the state um, and run and and not even contest elections because they already assume that the Republicans are going to run away with it. But you're absolutely right. When you look at the map of last night's results, um, particularly for Bernie Sanders, right? When you look at Bernie and John Fetterman for that matter, but particularly for Bernie Sanders, um, Bernie Sanders carried virtually the the entire state when you're looking at geographically right now obviously it's not in the population centers but you get a sense that the 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 message that john fetterman was bringing to this campaign about uh communities that are left behind um kind of bore itself out in those results i mean i think it was pretty incredible and the fact is is that the polls were i mean so far off when it came to the Senate race. I mean, you know, the, you know we talked about this in the podcast on, you know, uh, from yesterday is, but you know, the, uh, what was it here? The real clear politics average, right. Had Sestak up, right. By six, by 6.3 um, points um, going into, going into the primary. And they had Fetterman down at seven, right. Fetterman walked away from this with 20 plus percentage of the vote. I mean, it was, it was pretty incredible, and it came from those exact areas. So, I mean, you know, th- th- does that gel with kind of like your takeaway? Absolutely. Um, you know, like last night or yesterday morning, I got up at like 7.30 in the morning. Um, voter turnout was pretty high already at my polling place in Harrisburg. I was number 85 uh, mm-hmm. They walk into the polls at 7.30 in the morning. And um, I didn't make my decision on the Senate race until I walked into that booth. 
Mm -hmm. I was basically like, am I going to vote for Sestak? Maybe. I mean, he's, I was like, you know what? No, I just said, screw it. I voted for Fetterman because he's representing the future of the party. Mm -hmm. And he's talking about issues that Democrats need to be talking about, especially leadership in Harrisburg. There's a reason why, I get it. You're not going to contest in some of the races in central Pennsylvania, in, in the tier, in that going through the northern tier, in the central tier, whatever. But there's a reason why there's not even a single Democrat out in these areas until you hit Jonestown, 100 miles west of Harrisburg, or until you hit Pittsburgh, which is like 150, 200 miles west of here. There's a reason why there, you don't see any Democrats out there is because they don't target those areas, and they don't they don't run on that economic populist message that right. Sanders, Fetterman, and Donald Trump ran on. I mean, Donald Trump is running on a populist message. You might not agree with it. I don't agree with it, but he's running on that message that white working class voters who have felt like they've been left behind are just eating up in the central Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. It's not this crazy conservative, you know, religious thing that religious conservative talk. No, it is an economic populist message from the right that Trump supporters are eating up and it just shows you that the center of the state and the state's poorest areas are, they want that message being out there. And the Democrats, for some reason, don't campaign on that out there in those areas. Well, you know, we, we talked a little bit about this yesterday when, um, you know, I brought up the book by Thomas Frank, Thomas Frank's new book, uh, I'll Listen Liberal. Um, and there's been some really good writing on this for um, coming up. I'll, I'll tell you the name of the this other author. Um, I just forget, I'm spacing her name right now. Uh, she just had a, a fantastic book charting the history of the Democratic Party. One happened since, uh, you know, basically the 1970s. But really, we've seen the Democratic Party kind of walk away um, from its long-term commitment from um, kind of working class politics, right? Um, from supporting working families and so on. It does so in name, right? Um, but the very point that uh, that Thomas Frank makes is like, yeah, you know, we think about this or they branded themselves as the party of the people, the party of the working, you know, working families, the party of the middle class. But really the main constituency right now, right? Um, in the heads of the Democratic Party, it really has to do with professionals, like professional classes. You know, education becomes that market. Marker. So, you know, when when the the new Democrats, when they look at central Pennsylvania, right, they don't they see, well, look, there's no Ivy League schools over there. There's no kind of like private institutions that you have lower levels of, of, of you know, higher education. You don't have the kind of, you know, professionalization and the culture that you get in the city that therefore they automatically assume that therefore that's that's conservative. But in their heads, conservative, what conservative means to them, right, is is does not capture the actual, you know, like like life on the ground in those communities. And and this is just such a perfect example to that. So it might be true that the Democrat that is that could win, right, in central Pennsylvania, right, in that quote unquote T, right, is not going to look exactly like the Democrat that you see in Philadelphia. But that does not mean that therefore they're going to have to be conservative, they're going to have to be pro, you know, anti abortion, that they're going to have to be kind of super religious. No, it's the Fetterman angle, right? I mean, Fetterman, the, what the message that he brought was that kind of economic populism that I think um, really is exactly what you said. That is the future of the Democratic Party in this state. Yes. And, you know, we're going to, I'm not, I'm not happy with McGinty taking the Senate race. No, never mind. Um, um, you know, she has, she has horrible ties to the natural gas industry, oil and gas, and also frankly with Wall Street. I mean, a couple of years ago, she was sitting in front of us at the Progressive Summit saying that money doesn't influence politics. She doesn't believe in that. And, you know, then in that primary election coming up, she took like $500,000 from this coal industry magnet in mm -hmm. Pennsylvania from Western PA. And then she attacked Toomey on that. And then in the past like week and a half, the big money interest from our and, you know, the union, the labor unions and stuff like that dumped a million, had $4.5 million ad buy across mm -hmm. the state of Pennsylvania. And ultimately that propelled her to a victory. You know, I didn't really see, I thought it was going to be closer than that with Sestak. I didn't see Sestak polling in what the low thirties, mid thirties. I know it was yeah, thir uh, thir uh, 32%. Was I thought it was going to be more of a horse race. And that really goes to show you that Fetterman did well. I mean, Fetterman probably pulled a lot of those votes away from, uh, away from Sestak. Well, I, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't even think it was about pulling it away from Sestak as I think that there was people that went, that went to the polls and kind of did what you did. 
right? They didn't just think about Sestak. They're looking at the candidates and they're saying, you know, okay, you know, we know who this guy Joe Sestak is, you know, what he kind of stands for. He, he likes to be kind of, you, you know, he wants to talk about being progressive, but, you know, he's also got some very moderate stuff, very kind of measured things and war hawkish. War hawkish, you know. And look, I, you know, I, I, I don't want to turn it into a, like a session bashing Sestak, but, you know, because frankly, it, it, the one thing that you can always say for Sestak is Sestak shows up. I mean, he, he you know, uh, like I remember them, we had was students at Kutztown University, right? They had the polling place moved, um, and it got moved, so it had to, you know, you had to walk basically five miles or something like that, five miles to get to the um, to get to the polling place. And the students got organized around that, and they've been resisting it. There's a, a, a legal case that's coming um, coming up in that. And when they were this this past uh, this past year, when um, they were organizing another march to the polls, you know, Sestak came. You know, Sestak came and walked with us um, from the university to the polling place. And, you know, and, and he is that kind of guy and you got to give that to him. Um, and uh, but at the same time, he does not represent the kind of uh, kind of working class values about economic populism that I think is really catching fire in part because of, you know, the Bernie Sanders campaign. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So and the other thing I want to say too is like you know it was interesting also to, to following some of the um, you know uh, the, I was watching MSNBC just last night some of that and you know the McGinty campaign was uh, you know was making national news right in part because kind of the Democratic establishment just like you said just dumped tons of money into this race um, and really got behind Katie McGinty and that was um, I, I think it did have a huge difference. Um, and, you know, and, and for me, it's, you know, I, I was going back and forth. Some things, you know, maybe Katie McGinty would be good on this. But, you know, I was reading this, you know, article from NPR State Impact um, and, you know, basically charting out exactly what you said. And then going back to, you know, her appearance at the PA Progressive Summit, not this February, but the year before. Right. And and hearing her saying that, you know, the natural gas industry is the, the key to Pennsylvania's future. Right. And, you know, that is just not where we need to be yep another thing i want to touch on is how big donald trump won last night boom he won every county in pennsylvania yes and did you see the margin that he won in luzerne county no no what he was it one okay he won luzerne county mm -hmm. with 77.4 percent of the vote unbelievable he took in twenty eight thousand votes in that county alone you want to know what uh, Clinton took in there? What she won. Pick? She won that fifty-two to forty-six percent. You know, mm -hmm. a little bit more of a closer tie. She mm -hmm. only took in twenty thousand votes from there. Now, obviously, that's going to be contested. You know, mm -hmm. it's going to be a lot different when the election comes up. Sure. But do you think this puts Pennsylvania in play for the Republicans? Actually, this, I do. In and this I, November, I do, yeah. and I'll tell you why. No, go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I was going to say, you know, we've been voting consistently blue since what? I believe 92 or 88 when uh, George H.W. Bush was running. Mm -hmm. And um, it looks like there, there's a possibility that might change in, um, in a few more months from now. I, I agree. And I'll tell you, this is what was going through my mind last night is uh, I, I don't know if you got a chance to see uh, Trump's, you know, kind of victory speech last night. Did you see it? I I did not. Okay. Well, one of the things that, you know, he's I done fell asleep. I got up at nine 30 last night and yeah. the primary was over. Boom. That's it. Yeah. Done. Yeah. Yeah. I just, you know, I sat there like an idiot in front of the TV watching every little thing, <laughs> you know, just like, duh, you know, kind of, you know, I got my, I got my Twitter account up and kind of following it on Twitter and can see some of the, the chatter there, but then, you know, following it online or I mean on TV um, and in his, uh, his kind of victory speech, he really hit hard uh, on something that he's been toying with so far. Um, and it really has to do with the trade issue and the trade agreements. And so it really does look like his strategy going forward, like in an election against, uh, against Hillary, is going to be run to her left, right, on trade issues and economic populism. Um, and, you know, again, you line up what we just saw in Pennsylvania in terms of the results. We look at the strength of Fetterman's claims and the fact that Bernie Sanders, you know, for all practical purposes, I mean, he's out of the race. I mean, basically, he's he's uh, um, or out of the the pursuit for the presidential nomination, I should say. Um, even in his statement last night, Bernie Sanders came out and basically said, you know, um, we're going to push for the platform of the party. But 
did not even talk about uh, you know a path towards a domination at this point. And we can argue about that, but but the bigger point being is that you know that does put Pennsylvania, I think, in play for the Republicans um, precisely because he's going to hit hard on that that economic message. And you know, Clinton is you know it, it, in my mind is what's going to happen. Where she's going to pivot right towards the center, which is going to be away from those economic populisms, especially after Sanders is, is no longer in contention. Um, and, you know, that leaves a big opening for counties like Luzerne and kind of big sections of Pennsylvania. No, and this was our former coal region, you know, a mm -hmm. natural gas area that went big for him. Mm -hmm. It's going to be interesting to see how, see how this plays out. And, yeah. and man, he won big last night. I wasn't expecting him to sweep all five states. And yeah, it, it looks like this Trump, it looks like this tag team between Cruz and uh, Kasich is not going to work after last night. I mean, Trump will take the nominee within the next month or so. Well, you know, and you know, this is, you know, what blew my mind about about that whole little alliance there is that they went basically went public with it, right? <laughs> so I mean, so now it looks like it looks like this, you know, just exactly what Trump called it. Trump called it collusion, right? They it looked for, um, you know, looked like collusion, and people are going to be pissed off about that, and that's only going to bolster Trump's claim because he's just going to keep on hitting him on that. You know, I do think that you know when when the race when we move to Indiana, when we see what happens next week, I mean, that is going to, you know, that could potentially decide the entire race right there. So, um, so we'll see, but it does, it does look like we're talking about, uh, you know, a, a, a Trump Clinton election. Yeah. And then, so, uh, anything, anything else you want to talk about last night? I saw well, that Mark Cohen, um, yeah. A lot of plants talk about that. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, a lot of potted plants and paintings are going to need a new friend in the house. Yeah, Mark Cohen outside of Philadelphia, longest serving legislator in in the state, uh, was ousted yesterday. He was, which is not surprising. Uh, the last time Jared Solomon ran, he only lost by a couple percentage points, and this time he came back and won by thirteen or fourteen points in that race. Yeah, so I mean, and you're, we're talking about a solidly Democratic district there too, right? Yeah, he's not he's not going anywhere. Yeah. Um in my area it looks like uh John DeSanto won last night. Uh he looks like he might be my next state senator mm -hmm. um because of how gerrymandered this system is. And then uh one of Scott Wagner's big uh contemporaries won right across the bridge from me. Mm -hmm. Uh and Mike Regan. So that's someone you should be watching out for in um local politics over the next few months. This guy's a staunch conservative. He took over ten thousand dollars in campaign cash from Scott Wagner in a four way race. And um, Regan, you know, he was one of the people that helped get the medical marijuana issue through, but right, just right. about every other issue he will not he will not be uh, on our side with. So, yeah, I'm curious about your uh, I don't know if you followed uh, this at all, like in uh, the 8th Congressional District, you know, with Shaughnessy Naughton and uh, Steve Santa Sierra, uh, Santa, Santa, S Santa Sierra. Is that how you say his name? Yeah. Santa Sierra. Yeah. Did you follow that at all? Not really. Uh, I know it's been getting really dirty the past couple of weeks. Yeah, it's been getting re. It was. It got really, really nasty, and there was kind of claims going back and forth, and it was just kind of some weird stuff that was going on. But I just thought that's going to be interesting because, um, you know, uh, Senator Sierra is basically he got the same kind of. Uh, support right from kind of establishment democrats that we saw in some kind of some other races um and uh shaughnessy naughton um you know she she came very close to getting the nomination next time uh, last time but it's going to be an interesting race to follow because of course you got fitzgerald who's uh you know he's out you know he retired but now his i'm sorry sorry yeah fitzpatrick uh fitzpatrick Wait your retired. congressman well, you know, yeah, <laughs> he's uh, so he retired and his uh, his brother is now kind of running, which is also giving him all the name recognition and so on. Um, but uh, it's going to be really interesting to see what this is, what the race is going to shape up to be. So and one, one more thing mm -hmm. uh, looks like Kevin Boyle's bid for a Senate seat mm -hmm. fell flat last night. He lost by a few percentage points. Oh, he did. So the, Yes, he did. Um, That'll be interesting. Think, yeah, so the Stack Boyle fight continues in the Northeast Philadelphia this time, Stack, which is pretty interesting. 
Yeah, it is pretty interesting. I'll tell you, it's going to be really interesting. And I think, you know, I think uh, one of the things that uh, that we're going to have to follow up with is uh, I, I, I think we should really get in touch with the uh, with the Fetterman campaign um, to talk a little bit about where where this goes from here, because, I mean, his showing was really remarkable and uh, it's going to be interesting to see how he imagines or he and his campaign imagine um, to moving forward uh, to really kind of make good on that that whole notion that you know, want to stand up for these communities that have been you know have been left behind so and um, what I think he said we're not done so maybe he challenges Casey um, Pennsylvania second famous groundhog in a couple of years yeah so that might be exactly that may be uh, I'd love to see that I'd love to see Casey primary to be perfectly honest with you so get him out there on the issues <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah right he's got to pop his head up and say something it's just uh you know i i, I mean you know again I, this is could probably completely unfair but i always think about you know casey just standing there as, as pretty much a placeholder um that you know he's kind of running on his name and uh and he has he has not he's certainly not been a progressive candidate um but he's he does represent a particular uh, wing of the Democratic Party that believes that the only way that you win Democratic seats in states like Pennsylvania for the Senate is to uh, is to be conservative and to be basically be a moderate Republican. So. So, uh, yes, yeah, so you got anything else coming up this week? Anything on the agenda? No, not really. Um, just uh, waiting for set the House to get back in session in the next couple of weeks. I'm trying to see what happened with the. Uh, yeah, I think Boyle's team lost last night so mm -hmm. i wonder i'm trying to figure out if he's going back to the house or not oh pretty cool all right well this is uh so anything else you want to say before we sign off nope i'm done for the day it's time to go to sleep and get <laughs> yeah <laughs> well all right this I'm is off uh, to the, it's my first day off and i got a lot of cleaning to do around the apartment so uh. There you go. Yeah, I've got my my house is kind of like, you know, uh, half upside down with all sorts of work we're doing on the house right now. But so uh, so I'm trying to get some stuff done. So listen, this has been a special edition of uh, Out to Coop podcast. Uh, this is a project of Raging Chicken Radio, uh, Raging Chicken Press. Um, we're usually published a podcast. Uh, we drop it every Tuesday. Um, and now that we are on Podbean too as well. And I want to encourage everybody out there uh, once again. Yeah, I know I get the broken record and Sean's going to accuse me of being NPR here. Um, but if you a chance you know if you're going to support progressive media in pennsylvania uh go to ragingchickenpress.org and click on the support and membership tab um and become a member for as little as five dollars a month um it really helps um and we would really want to establish our goal for this next year to be really established raging chicken press and raging chicken radio uh as a sustainable enterprise so we can actually begin um you know uh paying people like sean and kind of other people um that are doing the amazing citizen journalism work um that they are so sean uh a great idea for today. I'm glad we did the postmortem and uh, look forward to talking to you next week. Yep. Looking forward to it. Talk to you later. All right, man. Talk to you later. We're out.